All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll get you all to to mute and I'm going to introduce Shannon and then we're going to get started. So if you haven't muted, I'm going to mute you. Okay. So today we're we're uh, fortunate to have Shannon Neighbor with us. Shannon is a partner in uh, Svensson Neighbor Recruiting. She's a Nate graduate from the Business Marketing Program of 2000 and started her recruiting company in 2012. Uh, Shannon Na Neighbor Recruiting, uh, or S now is. Neighbor recruiting. <laughs> Sorry about that, Shannon. Uh, specializes in recruitment of permanent sales, marketing, and management professionals working with employers in a variety of industries. Um, they also offer assessment tools that can be used for recruiting and selection, job benchmarking, and um, team development building. So we're very lucky to have Shannon with us today, um, sharing her uh, expertise and her time, even though she's um, juggling with homeschooling two, two children right now and uh, doing her, her MBA as well and running her company. So I'm gonna hand it over to you, Shannon, to uh, take us into the presentation. Awesome, thank you so much, uh, everybody, for being here today. So is what I usually like to do when I um, do presentations is if you guys have questions as I'm going through, just pop them into the chat box. Um, that way I can address everybody's questions um, right when I'm kind of talking about them. So I usually try and keep things broad. I know everyone will probably have very specific questions and we'll try and save a lot of time at the end for me to ask um, your, your direct questions. So today we're going to be talking about building your online network um, with LinkedIn. So this is for whether you're a job seeker or if you're just looking to network on LinkedIn. So I know some folks on the uh, call today might be um, business owners or wanting to start a business, uh, thinking about entrepreneurship. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you can utilize it from a personal job seeker perspective and also how you can use it um, from a networking perspective. So I'll get Cecile just to click to the next slide here. Um, so as Cecile mentioned, my name is Shannon Neighbor. I own a recruitment agency. Um, we offer a variety of different services for candidates and employers. Um, as everybody knows lately, we've been struggling with the down economy and then everything that's been going on with COVID has kind of compounded what's happened. So it's a struggle for entrepreneurs like myself right now. And I know also a struggle for, um, for folks that are looking for jobs. So I think that as we kind of transition into this more online world that we're in, it's going to become increasingly important what our images online, what we're doing with platforms such as LinkedIn, how we're networking and engaging with folks um, in a virtual environment. Uh, so I will get Cecile to click to the next one here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about a brief history on LinkedIn. Um, we're going to talk about some statistics. Uh, we're going to chat about effective profiles, um, networking on LinkedIn, and then we'll save some time at the end for some questions as well. So is what I usually uh, like to do is just tell a little bit of story. So just in terms of me, um, I was not a huge user of LinkedIn until probably 2011. So at that time I left my corporate job, which is um, I worked in sales as a general sales manager at CTV. And at that time um, I had never used LinkedIn uh, in my job. And as I was thinking about being a job seeker and then thinking about entrepreneurship, it became a very important tool for me. So LinkedIn actually launched in 2003 um, and then in 2008 it went global. Just to put it into perspective, in 2010 there were 90 million members, 2013 225 million and now over 630 million members. So I think that we can all appreciate the fact that over the years we've become um, more acclimated to doing things online. And I think that this is very reflective of how people are going more online in a business sense to network, to connect as job seekers, et cetera. So 15 million uh, folks in Canada, 40% of the population are LinkedIn members. I'll get Cecile to click to the next one here. So just in regards to who exactly is on LinkedIn, um, I'm assuming that most of the participants here today are LinkedIn members. 
Um, but 30 million businesses are on LinkedIn, and in Edmonton, there's 448,000 total members. There's also 9,000 businesses who are either located in Edmonton or service the Edmonton market here on uh, LinkedIn. Um, and there's over 500 Edmonton-based discussion groups. So a few things that we're gonna talk about is if you are a business, um, the importance of having a business page, um, but then we'll also talk a little bit more about um, how to get involved in those discussion groups that are Edmonton-based and then how to kind of effectively engage with your business on LinkedIn as well. But the first thing we're gonna talk about today is just having a professional um, online presence. Um, and that's in regards to being a job seeker. So I'll get Cecile to click through to the next uh, slide here. Um, I always like to provide some statistics just so people can really understand the importance of having a good professional um, persona and image uh, on LinkedIn. So for me, because I work in recruitment, I use LinkedIn intensely, whether that be for um, looking for new customers, being employers, or whether that be looking for candidates for jobs, if we're doing a headhunt. Um, I also use it if I want to validate um, when I'm seeing somebody's resume. There's a variety of different reasons that I go there. Um, but uh, career, career Builder surveyed HR professionals and determined that in 2018, 70% of employers use social media to screen candidates during the hiring process, and 43% use social media to check on current employees. So this isn't just LinkedIn. This could be a variety of different um, online sources, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera. I think that everybody has probably heard examples in the news over the past few years of somebody saying something inappropriate on social media or positioning themselves in a way that was not reflective of their employer's values and repercussions came of that. So I think that the further, you know, the deeper we get into this new virtual world that we're all getting acclimated to, I think that these numbers are probably going to be substantially higher. They probably are substantially higher right now. Um, but moving into the future, I think that this is definitely going to be a standard practice. So 58% of HR people are looking to support qualifications, and this is something that I do as well. I usually say that the resume should be a condensed version of what your skills and abilities are directly as it relates to the job, but you can contain much more information on your LinkedIn profile. Projects you've worked on, go deeper into your career history, um, more information about the tactical day-to-day -day that you do in your job. Um, so I will certainly go to LinkedIn to kind of support the qualifications that I'm seeing on a resume. 50% um, are ensuring that professional online persona. So as I mentioned, um, organizations are more or even, I guess, more hypersensitive towards what their employees are doing online and how that might reflect their values. Um, so ensuring that either someone that they're looking to hire or folks that they have employed with them um, do have that um, professional persona is becoming increasingly important. 34% uh, want to see what other people are posting about the candidate. So one of the things that we'll talk about today is um, endorsements and recommendations and how you can encourage people to promote you on LinkedIn. Um, but I think that those things are very important. Um, and 24% are actually looking for reasons not to hire the candidate. So this could be um, a candidate went to an interview in person, over the phone, whatever that looked like. And maybe the HR person was feeling like my spidey senses are tingling on something. Something here isn't adding up. Um, they go online to kind of validate if what their gut is telling them is correct about that candidate. So I'll get Cecile to click over to the next slide here. So whether, whether you're using LinkedIn as a tool um, from a job seeker perspective or whether you're using that as a business um, or trying to generate uh, new clients, um, increase kind of your own personal persona, um, there's a few things that are really critical. So let's not think about the company page for a minute and we're just gonna think about your personal profile. Um, and what that needs to look like. So the profile photo is the number one biggest thing. This is the first thing that people are gonna notice. Um, so this should be a very professional photo framed at the shoulders. You should be the only person in that photo look professional, smiling and friendly. I know that this might seem 
um, obvious and maybe a lot of people are like, yeah, obviously my, my profile photo looks professional, but you have no idea how many photos I come across on LinkedIn um, that just are not LinkedIn appropriate, maybe appropriate for Facebook or Instagram, maybe in some instances appropriate for Twitter, but not appropriate for LinkedIn. And for those who don't have a photo, I would definitely encourage having a photo there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how LinkedIn works in terms of an aggregator, but it is important to have a very profile. So I'll get Cecile to click to the next one here. Um, also, your profile should be complete and publicly visible. So the more complete your profile is on LinkedIn, the higher it's ranked in searches. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about how, well, and also I'll just mention this to um, the privacy settings. So I won't be showing you anything tactical today, but you can go into edit your public profile and just make sure that if someone Googles your name, um, your profile is open to the public so you can be more searchable that way. Um, that is how it appears in search engines. Um, but in regards to the LinkedIn algorithm and how that works, so the more complete your profile is, um, the, the higher it will show up in uh, searches. So I'll get Cecile to click to the next slide here. Um, the company and position where you work with the applicable dates, description of kind of what you've done in your job. Um, so not just the uh, like, well, like the soft things that you do in your job, the day to day, and also like quantifiable accomplishments are important to mention. Uh, projects, any current recommendations, having over 200 connections, all your contact information, endorsements, languages, volunteerism, all that stuff. The more complete your profile, the higher your profile will um, show up in search results. So say for instance, I'm doing a keyword search for something very broad. Let's say I am looking for a recent graduate of a marketing program, um, and whether that be at Nate or at any um, post-secondary institution, that could net me hundreds if not thousands of results. The people that come up higher in the search result are the people that have a more complete profile. So even if someone is looking for, say, for instance, um, they're looking for a contract graphic designer um, or somebody who specializes in a certain area because they're looking to engage with that person to do business with, the better your profile, the higher likelihood that you're going to come up on the top of the search. So I can tell you usually when I'm doing searches with really broad parameters where a lot of folks are coming up in that search, I typically won't go past maybe eight or 10 pages. So anyone who doesn't have profile pictures, um, doesn't have very much information in terms of um, where they're working and what they've done, and they're on those late pages, I probably won't even see them. So I feel like it does take time to build a good solid um, LinkedIn profile, but I think that it's really worth it and everybody should make the effort to um, have a profile that you're proud of that really displays who you are, what you've done and what you've accomplished. So onto the next slide, um, in terms of connections, um, the more first degree connections you have, the more access you'll have to second degree connections and the more people you'll be exposed to. So I always tell people to remember to add former colleagues, classmates, friends, relatives. Um, if you go to a virtual networking event or you're introduced to somebody, it's a great way to um, uh, stay connected with someone. So to connect with them on LinkedIn, um, this helps broaden your network availability. So for me, for instance, say that I'm doing um, a search because we're looking for employers who might want to engage our services. And let's say, um, we have expertise in the industrial construction um, business. If I do a search for folks who maybe work in an HR function or a hiring manager function within industrial um, construction, the more first degree connections I have that are connected to those folks, the more um, searchable or the easier my search will be to kind of find those people that I'm looking for. So I always get this question, who should you connect with um, and who should you not connect with? And how do you connect with someone that you don't know? So for me, I think I have probably over 3000 connections on LinkedIn and the nature of what I do is I meet a lot of people or a lot of people want to connect with me if they're job seekers. Um, and generally, if people are from the Edmonton area, 
Um, and they've looked at my profile, even if they don't send me a personalized message when they're connected, connecting with me, chances are I will accept their connection. Um, not all people take that approach and you have to do what is comfortable for you. Um, so if people you don't know are inviting you to connect without a personalized message, I mean, you have to do the right thing, whatever you think is right there. Um, is my, what my suggestion would be for you, for all of you guys, if you're trying to connect with people you want to do business with, or you're connecting with maybe a potential employer, or you're wanting more information about something, when you send that connection, to so send a personalized message explaining why you're connecting, and you'll probably get a more favorable result there. Um, so that's kind of what my suggestion would be. I also feel for me, um, usually people who don't live um, you know, within Alberta, who haven't looked at my profile, who I don't know, I'm always a little bit skeptical. I'm also skeptical of people who try to connect with me who have very few connections um, or who don't have a complete profile. So I think that this is another place where it becomes very important um, what your profile looks like. Um, just increases your, I guess, your legitimacy when you're trying to connect with people on LinkedIn. So I guess to seal the clip to the next slide here. So we'll just talk a little bit about the importance of keywords. So I'm sure everybody has heard um, this term keywords, whether you're applying for a job or you're trying to do searches. Um, using the correct keywords is very important. So this also helps increase your searchability. Um, and your credibility on LinkedIn. So everybody will have different keywords that are relative to their own personal experience. So depending on what you took at school, where you've worked, what your job function has been, where your areas of expertise are. Um, if you're unclear of what kind of keywords to use in your profile, um, I usually say, even if you're not a job seeker, to look at the job boards and um, look at positions um, that are relative to what you do and kind of see which which uh, keywords are popping up in those job profiles. If you are a job seeker, keywords are very important, not only on your LinkedIn profile, but also in your resume. Um, applicant tracking systems will parse out keywords from resumes, and that will help you be more searchable to HR people, excuse me, and potential employers. Um, so industry jargon, acronyms, um, those things are very important. Also qualitative information is important in keywords. Um, so for me, being a recruiter, I might use a variety of words like recruiter, recruitment, headhunting, human resources, staffing, like there's a number of things that are kind of related to what I do. Um, and so like I said before, the LinkedIn profile, you can contain much more information there um, than you do on a resume. So it is easier to, you know, fill that information out even deeper and provide more, more data, more analytics, more keywords. Um, more information about what your day today was on LinkedIn than it is um, on a resume. So we'll click to the next slide here. So we'll talk a little bit about qualitative versus quantitative information. Um, it is really important to focus on and highlight a quantifiable result. So no matter what you've done, um, if you're a business, no matter what you're selling or what you're in the business of doing, People want to see what you've accomplished. Um, so the easiest example I can think of is in sales, um, because usually sales folks have sales targets. Um, so highlighting how you achieved, how you overachieved um, year over year, what that growth looked like, definitely providing those numbers. Um, but if you don't work inside of sales, like let's say, for instance, you're a safety professional, you might want to think about number of days on the job without an incident. Um, if you uh, work in uh, marketing, you might want to think about any like special recognition or accolades you've received on work that you've done, um, any increases in productivity if you work in uh, manufacturing, um, if you implemented any new systems with quantifiable metrics, um, definitely mention that, um, and any special or notable projects that you were involved in. So. I feel like this is the number one area where people usually um, make a mistake either on a resume or on their LinkedIn profile. People really uh, kind of go towards their day to day, um, what they were required to do in the job. And usually most job, um, most job functions, it's obvious what the job um, probably entailed, but not obvious um, what you personally accomplished. So it's incredibly important 
um, to highlight these things. And that's definitely something that both employers um, and people wanting to engage with businesses are definitely looking for. Uh, the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about volunteerism. So I think that this is becoming more important as organizations kind of look at what their own values are and then how that uh, aligns and relates to the values of people that they're hiring or people that they're wanting to do business with. So looking at how you give back to the community, I think it's important to really boast about the volunteers and you do the things that you um, are passionate about and you care about um, and really highlighting those extracurricular activities. So for those who are students, um, maybe you were involved in a student group or maybe you got involved in um, like a peer to peer networking or maybe you participated in those extracurricular things. Those are all things that you should definitely talk about. And for those who don't get involved in some way, um, I would really encourage you to look at the things that you're passionate about and how you can get involved. Um, I think that more and more is what we're seeing in interviews. Um, or um, businesses engaging with suppliers is they're really looking to see how their set of values aligns with um, the people that they're working with. Um, another thing, I did a, a presentation a couple of weeks ago, and we talked a lot about um, if you're wanting to go from A to B, like let's say you're trying to make a career move, um, how do you kind of bridge that gap if you don't have experience? It's like that, that um, you know, when you're in that conundrum of how do I get experience if nobody's willing to give me experience, um, but I need experience to apply for every job that I'm interested in. And volunteerism is really a great way to kind of get exposure um, to things that you might not be um, able to get exposure to in the workplace, and then to provide that extra layer of credibility or things to talk about on your resume. Uh, so how much information to include? Um, we'll just go to the next slide here. Um, people always ask this as well, how far back to go in career history, how much information to include on the LinkedIn profile. On the LinkedIn profile, I would suggest that people provide much more information than they would on the resume. Um, there are different places here where you can um, highlight projects and attach um, documents that people can look at. I also encourage people to go all the way back in their career history so to wherever it started in a meaningful way. Of course, I mean, if you, you know, did various part time jobs that aren't meaningful, you know, you probably don't want to include those. But where your professional career starts, I think it's important to kind of highlight all of that. I always feel like going far back um, in your experience really tells a story about who you are and how you got to where you are. Um, so I would definitely encourage people, even if they've had, you know, 20, 30 year careers to go that far back and really detail that information. I think that that's important. Um, and I also, like I said, really think that, you know, you can really expand on the day to day stuff that you do in your job on your LinkedIn profile. Um, when employers or people who want to engage with you to do business are looking for information. Um, they will, you know, scroll through and sort through what they want to see and what they don't, but having that information there, I think is very important. Um, in terms of education, I think that it's really important to include and highlight um, any special projects you worked on. Um, if you worked on a project with a group and you received a really high mark or accolades, or you were working with an industry partner um, that provided, um, feedback or um, accolades to you and your group for doing that, those kind of things you want to highlight. Often folks will say, I don't have any professional experience. I just have my experience at school. So kind of how do I bridge that gap between no um, industry experience? And I think that you do that through what you did at school. So if you worked on a personal project that you were really proud of, um, those things I think are very important to highlight under education. And in time, as you work through your professional career, um, those things might become less important, so you might um, filter those things out of your LinkedIn profile. But I think while you're trying to build um, a story about who you are and what you're capable of, the experience you have at school is incredibly important. Um, I also think think interests. Um, this is another uh, uh, part of LinkedIn where you can add some information. I think that this is important um, because if you have um, special interests outside of kind of what you're doing, things that you're passionate about, curious about, want to understand more, this is important because when people do keyword searches, um, they can 
that will also populate in there and you will also get content recommendations based on sometimes what your interests are, groups, and we'll talk a little bit more about groups and contributing to groups as well. Um, but I think that it is important to have a really robust profile. And for those of you who have a LinkedIn profile and go there often, there's actually a, a little uh, field on the top that will uh, encourage you to build your profile out even further. So LinkedIn will actually make recommendations where you can provide more information to have a more complete profile. And you can also check um, to see how complete LinkedIn ranks your profile. So go there often, make those improvements, because again, that will just help you in the searchability. So we'll click on to the next slide here. So just in regards to networking on LinkedIn. Um, so for those of you who utilize LinkedIn um, often, you will notice that there are a number of groups um, where you can get involved in conversations. So those groups can be things that you um, follow and that you engage in. So those might be local Edmonton groups. Um, if you're a business owner, um, those might be business related groups. Um, those could be groups that are worldwide that are related to say leadership or related to sales or related to marketing. There's so many different groups that you can follow and engage in. Um, I think that it's a very good idea, especially as you're trying to build your personal and professional brand to get involved in the conversation. Um, even for folks who don't have a ton of industry experience yet, everyone has experience in something to contribute to conversation. So I think it's important to um, add value, ask questions, engage with people. Um, over the years, I've made a number of really awesome connections, either um, people that we collaborate with or clients that we do business with who were just asking a question in a group. Maybe it related to like assessing um, or building a stronger team. And um, I posted something in relation to my expertise on that topic. Um, and I've created a lot of really good relationships that way. So I would really encourage everybody to do that. Um, you can post your own content and make it engaging. Um, so one of the things that we're really focused on is we have a business page. So the Spence and Neighbor Recruiting business page, and then also my personal page. Um, I will post uh, content like blog posts that I write myself based on my expertise, share it to my personal page, and then we'll um, transfer that information over to our uh, company page as well. Um, so some of the things that I write about are you know, about interview tips and techniques. Um, we wrote a blog not too long ago about the future of place-based office space, um, things that are really interesting to our clients, to our candidates, um, helps further profile me as a, a, a thought leader and also our business. Um, so connect with people and personalize the message. So one of the things that maybe some folks here are engaged in is online networking. Um, a lot of groups that did in-person networking have now kind of brought it online. Um, so I think that when you meet people networking online, um, it's important to connect with them in LinkedIn, send them a personalized message that you enjoyed meeting with them, want to keep in touch. Again, that really helps kind of build out your um, uh, number of connections you have, gives you more exposure to those second degree connections, helps you meet other people. Um, for those of you who are using LinkedIn as a tool for business, I would recommend getting a premium account um, and using InMail. So one of the things that really, I don't know if bothers is the right word, but when people reach out to me and they wanna do business with me and they just try and connect with me and then I get the sales pitch, I don't really like that. Um, is what I prefer and is what we do with our business is we would send an email so the person isn't obligated to connect with me. Um, they can decline the email if they're not interested in what we're offering, um, or they can accept if they are interested in learning more. Um, but we pay money for that premium account and pay money for those emails. Um, it's just kind of, I guess, respecting other people's boundaries. Um, if you're, a, you know, somebody who's just wanting LinkedIn to keep connected and, you know, engage in discussion, it's not necessary to have a paid account. Um, but you really have to think about what you're using it for and see if the value would be there. Also with the premium account, account, you have more searchability features. So if you're um, like me and you use it for business development or I use it to connect with potential candidates for jobs, I like having those filters um, where I can put more parameters around what I am looking for. Um, 
especially for those more broad searches, because you can have a lot of things that come up in the search. So um, with the premium account, I can really kind of narrow down what I'm looking for. Um, so, you know, that's up to each individual. Um, if you are a job seeker or you're trying to be really proactive about your job search and you want to connect with HR people or potential hiring managers, you might want to consider getting a premium account so you can do those searches and send out those emails. It really is just up to the individual. Um, so the other thing when you're networking on LinkedIn that I would really encourage is for everybody to be a valuable resource and lend your insights. So some people might say, well, I'm just a student or just newly graduated. Like, what could I possibly have to you know, share with people? But I think it's important to remember that we all have our own individual um, experiences and there's always something that we can add to a discussion and an insight. Um, diversity is key to having those meaningful discussions. So, um, you know, feel, feel empowered, I guess, to get involved in those conversations or even ask questions. Um, I think that it's really important. And again, as we go more online, I think that we'll see a lot more people having more open dialogue discussions on platforms like LinkedIn. So definitely feel you know comfortable getting involved there. And if you have a company page, um, definitely invite people to like it. Or if you don't have a company page, definitely start one. So another piece of advice that I'll give um, to entrepreneurs or business people um, is do not start a personal page under your company name and then invite people. Um, to be connections, that is not the correct way to go about it. You have to start an actual company page. Um, so this works a little bit different than having a personal page, but when you start a company page, you can invite all your connections to like and follow your page. Um, and then you can obviously provide a little bit different content um, on that page than you would on a personal page. So that kind of wraps up the structure part of my presentation. Um, I welcome any questions and I feel like a lot of people usually have very personalized or specific questions. So if anybody wants to put anything in the chat, I'm happy to kind of address questions now. Um, and of course, um, I'm happy to connect with everybody on LinkedIn after the presentation here. Um, I love staying connected and engaged with people and you know, try to provide you know, advice and value where I can. Um, we do a number of um, things one-on-one -on -one for you know, people, uh, job seekers, or even providing advice to companies, sharing our experiences, we're really big on that. So um, happy to take any questions anyone has. There are a couple in the chat, Shannon. Okay. Um, one from Dusty. Oh, I see this. Okay, sorry, sorry guys. I'm not familiar with this platform, so I'm just seeing this stuff right now. Um, okay, so, where would you put being um, on the Dean's list? So I would put that probably under education. Um, achievements, I would use achievements a little bit more for things like if you got a recognition um, in your job or you received an award or like I would put what I call vanity metrics there. So if you were recognized like top 40 under 40 or something, I would put those things under achievements. I would keep Dean's list under education. And then there's one from more Myreen. Yeah, so Myreen says, um, would I recommend setting up for the premium? Again, it just really depends on what you're using it for. Um, we use it in-depthly, like we have a very expensive account um, that's specifically for recruiters where we can kind of um, keep um, our information a little bit more organized there. Um, so it really depends on what you're using it for. If you're a job seeker and you want to do some more in-depth searches, I think that you can sign up and try it for free. Um, so you can see if you get value out of it, if it's worth it. I think that the cheapest account that you can buy is just over $50 a month, I wanna say. Um, so it really depends. I would just be cautious because LinkedIn um, will definitely keep charging your credit card and it's very complicated to go in and um, cancel your uh, subscription. So just kind of be careful that you kind of read the the, the mice type on that to make sure that you know what you're signing up for. Yeah, what I found was premium account is just over $100 a month and that's the next level up. And uh, you get 25 in mails a month. Um, but if you're not 
maybe if you're active in a job search, it might be an idea to have it for a couple of months, but I wouldn't keep it going after that. And you, there are ways to, like Shannon said, to send personalized messages. Um, or try and connect through somebody they may know. I will say this as well. Like, if you are a job seeker, there's a, a little thing that you can, you can kind of click on this button and it puts a little briefcase beside your name and it shows employers that you're open to um, looking for employment opportunities. And I don't know how the algorithm exactly works with LinkedIn, but I do know that when we're doing searches for candidates, the folks that have that little briefcase or who have clicked on that button, those people will show up um, higher in the search. So that's an option for you as well. Okay. And uh, Laura Lee has a question. Yeah, so um, in regards to putting a reference on your LinkedIn account and your resume or on a cover letter. So I, in regards to the resume, I'm a big believer in the one page resume. On average, a hiring manager or HR person will spend seven seconds looking at your resume. So you have to make it concisely and abundantly clear that you are a fit for the job. Um, no one's reading, I mean, a two page resume, if you absolutely must, I guess, but nobody's reading a three, four, five page resume. I mean, it's just simply people do not have to come for that anymore. Um, so I think that in terms of putting references on your resume, those references that are on LinkedIn, I think that they can be valuable um, as long as you have room on your resume to do that. I have done that in the past um, for candidates who have um, who have not as much information to showcase on the resume, but they want to offer some uh, credibility. And if they have someone like an instructor that they really respect or someone that they um, worked with on a project and they want to highlight that, I think that there's absolutely no problem doing that. And I also think it's a neat way to have a bit of a different resume, but just keep in mind, um, don't have a super long resume. Uh, and also on like references and skill endorsements, like definitely ask your network on LinkedIn to give you those things. And there's a function through LinkedIn where you can just send it and it'll say your connection so-and-so is asking um, for a, a recommendation. But make sure that if you're asking for recommendations that you're comfortable giving those back to people as well. Um, so I see the next question here, um, all the work experience, even if it's not related to the field. So. Again, you kind of have to use your judgment here. So say, for instance, you are um, applying for a job um, that's wanting you to have exemplary communication experience, and maybe you've worked in data analysis. So you're not, you're not really getting like that in-depth um, communication with the job that you're currently in, but maybe you worked at Starbucks before. You might want to include that on your resume because that really shows that you would have that customer interaction. So I think that you need to use your judgment. Usually I say don't go deep back into the part time jobs unless you're a recent graduate and the only experience you have is kind of that part time casual work. Um, if you do have uh, over three or more years of professional experience, I probably wouldn't go deep into the part time um, previous experience unless again it is directly related. Um, you know, if you're applying for something, say, in a call center and you work part time in a call center, I mean, that is maybe something you want to highlight or at least maybe mention in the cover letter. Um, but it just kind of depends also how long your resume is. Like if you've always worked contract work, so in the past three years, you've maybe had like eight positions. You might want to cut some of that off at the end if it starts to get too long and cumbersome for someone to go through. You just kind of have to use your judgment on that. Um, let's see, there's a question here from Kim, um, received some suggestions from LinkedIn that I need to hire a professional agent to rewrite my resume. Should I need to pay for that service? Um, okay, so interesting. I'm curious, Kim, is this like a recommendation that came through LinkedIn um, suggesting this? I would say again, you kind of need to use your judgment there. So we we offer um, resume writing services to candidates here. Um, we charge about 500 bucks to do a resume and a cover letter, and then we'll go through the LinkedIn profile as well. And that's pretty standard. Like most folks who do resume writing charge approximately $500 unless you start getting up into the executive level, which could cost more money. Um, I don't necessarily though think that you really need to pay for that service. Um, from time, usually people just have a few questions or want some extra advice or like a look over on their resume. 
Um, Chantelle and I here at SNR will do like what we call a 25 for 25. So it's like 25 bucks for 25 minutes one on one to go through the resume because usually people don't need us to write the resume. They just want that extra layer of like advice, affirmation, second set of eyes on the resume. There are also a lot of really good tools online um, where you can I use templates to develop a pretty good resume and examples of good resumes. So I think unless you have the money and you're really, really struggling with how to do it, I think you can probably do it yourself. And um, like I said, I mean, like Chantelle and I host events all the time where it's really inexpensive just to get a second set of eyes on a resume. Uh, so I see there's a question here, um, check qualifications. Does that mean they search on previous employers? I doubt my previous company would have anything like that. Um, so when I say check qualifications, um, if I look at a resume and I see someone's worked at a particular company, let's say for the past three years, I might go to LinkedIn to validate that that information is um, the same on LinkedIn as it is on the resume. Um, if any, if you're applying for a job, an employer wants to validate employment, they will certainly tell you that and get your permission before they do anything where they would say, for instance, call a previous employer. Um, but I think that they're really looking to find more information about you online. Like that's really what employers are trying to do um, is just see what else they can find out about you, maybe other information that you haven't included in the resume. They wanna corroborate the information that they see in the resume to see that that looks the same online. I hope I answered that correctly. Um, so I haven't seen another one here. Instructor having students reaching in age levels um, and levels of experience. The profession is evolving fast and furious. I'm always trying to encourage students to sell their overall ability, totally from school and past experience. How or what uh, do you suggest a new person to LinkedIn should focus on while building their networking? Yeah, so I think that um, this is a great point. I meet with many people who um, maybe had a career in accounting and realized that that wasn't for them and they're moving into human resources or they're moving into marketing or maybe even um, international students who um, had a different discipline um, before they came here and now they're studying for something totally different. And it's always that struggle between how much of the story do I tell about my previous experience and you know, what do I leave out because that's not what I'm wanting to do now. And I think that the person as a professional is a culmination of all the experience, all the professional experiences you've had, all the things you've been involved in that makes up who you are. And I think that a lot of employers are moving towards really understanding what those soft skills, I hate using that word because that I feel to me like that minimizes what those things are, but let's call them soft skills, are really looking for what those soft skills are, who you are on a values level, um, what, what is that culmination of your previous experience and how that's going to relate to success in the organization. Many organizations are okay um, training on their product or what their company is or what their industry is, but really want to get that like holistic view of who you are. So I definitely agree that selling your overall ability, um, and there's many, many ways to do that. Um, I think that it is very important. And I think that that's where the strong cover letter comes in. Because in the cover letter, you can do a little bit more storytelling about who you are as a person, what you're passionate about, how your previous experiences, life experience have kind of culminated um, into this really cool skill set that is relatable to the job. So I think it is really important to think about who you are and how your experiences have kind of molded and developed who you are now, and then how you relate that to offering success and um, offering something to a new employer or a new kind of position. So I think on LinkedIn, you can have a lot more information about those experiences that you can in the resume, but I think that if um, you utilize the cover letter correctly, that you can do a little bit more storytelling there. But again, with the cover letter, be concise with that. And you should also relate it back directly to what the job is asking for. So make it very obvious for anybody looking at it that you're a suitable fit for the job. I don't know if we have any other questions, if anyone um, wants to chat live. Mm -hmm. 
Any questions, anybody? Well, again, Cecile, maybe if you want to click to the last slide there, I just have my LinkedIn profile there. So I'm happy to connect with everybody one on one. And if you have one on one questions that you think of when we um, hang up from this call here, you know, down the road and you're wanting some one on one advice, I'm happy to have a quick conversation and kind of um, point, hopefully point you in the right direction. Again, I think that everybody's situation is always a little bit um, unique. So sometimes how one person would position themselves professionally or, you know, would the kind of information they would put on a profile is maybe a little bit different from someone else. So I'm happy to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations afterwards. Right. And um, also Lori Lee has a good point that um, she's from Nate. And if you are a Nate alumni, um, there is support and help with resumes and cover letters as well through, through Nate. So, okay. Thank you so much, um, Shannon. If there's no other questions, I just want to thank you for giving us your time today and uh, sharing your knowledge. And I hope everybody got something out of this. I'm going to be sending a short survey to everybody who attended. Just take you two minutes, if not less, just to complete it and help us get some feedback. And um, and then um, if you, I will, I have taped the session and I will be posting the the um, taped session as well. So. Um, do know that. And if you have follow up questions, you've got uh, a good way to connect with Shannon on LinkedIn. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Everybody have a great afternoon. Enjoy the beautiful weather.